The load call settlement system streamlines the process of creating payments and reports for your drivers directly from the uh, invoice data that you are calculating on a ticket by ticket basis. So in some other videos, we've gone over how to manage withholdings fuel cards additionally do, as well as some of the default settlement systems and ways to override how those are calculated out within the uh, directory data tab as well as within accounting management. But in this uh, video, we're actually going to go ahead and create a settlement and work through that entire process. So we'll get started by clicking on the green create settlement button, giving our settlement a name, date, time zone, end date, uh, and event, and the uh, withholding time frame that we're doing, and uh, kind of get started there. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to call this uh, the, uh, we'll call it 21 dot. 2.1. So I'm just naming it, you know, February, the first half of the month for uh, 2021. So with my start date, and because it's the first one in the system, it's not filled out the start date, but it will suggest a start date if you have other ones in the system. We're going to go ahead and choose the first at uh, midnight central time, and we're going to end on the uh, 16th at midnight and then the central time is already selected up above. We're going to based off of unload date, and we're going to say that we are going to do our withholding calculations based off of half of a month. So uh, these can be customized depending on your organization settings, but uh, we'll go ahead and click that, click save, and that will create a new settlement for us that we're going to dive right into. So after a settlement is created, we can go ahead and enter it by clicking on the three dot and clicking view with also the option to delete a settlement. However, you can only delete settlements that are in the unlocked state. So right here, you can see the little green unlock icon. After we complete the settlement and lock it, it will be archived and not be able to be deleted. The other thing to note is you may notice that the uh, dates here look a little different. That's because my computer is in mountain time, but I selected it to be in central time. So load call will automatically do any corrections and display it in the uh, time zone that your computer's in but uh, these are the correct dates for a central time based uh, settlement. But if I go into here and click view settlement, you'll see that there are quite a few different tabs. It's a little bit reminiscent of the uh, invoice system where we kind of go through this process, but uh, it's a little different. So we'll touch on the differences in here, but you'll notice that it just calculated my initial settlement data. So it took all of the tickets between uh, February 1st and February 15th or 16th, and it's gone through and it's calculated how much income you have. And you can see that we had an invoice amount of 29,000, but we're paying out 24,000 because we do an 85% payout. You can see that there's 118 tickets. And then you can see some of the other withholdings, recurring withholdings, other withholdings, fuel receipts, any additionally due and et cetera. So, up here on the summary tab, you can see that we can change the settlement name if we named it incorrectly in the beginning or we need to change it. You can see the date the settlement was created, who it was created by, and then the bill period and the uh, way that we calculate our withholdings. And then within each of these subcategories down here, you can see you know additional information. You can see the different breakdowns between recurring withholdings, the number of one-off withholdings, subtotals, uh, and et cetera. And you'll notice that the columns here, this is the uh, total column and then you have the uh, total right here, the subtotals, and then the inactive column would be any withholdings or other things that are applying to carriers that don't have any tickets. So these may be inactive and you need to kind of look at shutting some of those down. So you can see we have a case with that in here. But uh, the other thing to note up down here at the bottom is we have a series of refresh buttons. So if you hover over it, you can see what will be refreshed by clicking on the button. You can refresh the entire settlement, which redoes tickets, withholdings, fuel cards, etc. So this one kind of takes a while, but if you only want to refresh part of it, like the tickets or fuel receipts, withholdings, reimbursements, active equipment, recurring withholdings, etc., then it, there are these options to uh, refresh just parts of a settlement if that's what we're working in. But uh, that's the summary page. So we're going to jump over in the next segment to talk about some of the next tabs. So the next tab within the settlement system is the review tab. So if I click on that, you will see that we have the option to load the settlement review or refresh all accounting ticket information. So we're going to go ahead and click on the load settlement review button. And what this will do is it'll pull up a series of potentially flagged items to look at much uh, like the uh, ticket review system used within the accounting system for uh, invoices. 
but you can see that it's got different tiles in here. So we can go ahead and kind of like that, we can click on any of these tiles or we can use the bottom to navigate or click on the next and back button up here on the top to kind of run through it. But the first thing you'll notice right here, we have carriers that have active equipment, but no tickets. So they, these may be carriers where you still have the truck or trailer set up saying that it's active within the system, which means you might be paying insurance on it potentially, but uh, the carrier is not operating any on there. So these are kind of situations where you may need to go in and make sure the equipment's been correctly reassigned or deactivated or moved off of the insurance or check why a carrier may not have any tickets, which potentially means maybe somebody accidentally created a duplicate carrier. Whatever the case in here, it'll flag these carriers. You can see we've got a bunch of these. Obviously, the test carrier probably shouldn't have anything. Um, but uh, in here, we have you know active truck and trailer counts as well as the number of tickets. So what we can do is view the carrier and kind of track through and see what uh, is going on in here. And we'll go through this window in a little bit because it gives you know quite a bit of information. But uh, back to the review, you can see that we have ticket invoice errors. So if you come into here, you can see tickets and any of the errors that may have failed to calculate or any of the subtotals that failed to calculate. So in here we have a bunch where the invoice didn't necessarily uh, you know, show up in here. So we come into here, we could come into the invoice tab and you could see that there is a problem on the fuel surcharge. So it looks like that that's why it doesn't total up there. But uh, usually these will probably be resolved in the invoice process uh, rather than the settlement process. But if there's any that slip through the cracks, you can catch them in here. Uh, if there's any errors with withholdings, either recurring or otherwise, or fuel receipts or any of the reimbursements, those will be flagged here. Uh, monitored carriers allows you to go in and within load call select any carriers that you kind of want to monitor more closely if they have you know, kind of a problematic history of um, not being good about keeping up on different withholdings and things, you can do that. Uh, if there's any negative balances or negative statements or ending balances, then those get caught in here as well, as well as any other kind of issues with the uh, percent payouts are recurring. But you can see right here, we've got these two where we uh, loaded in probably the fuel receipts on these, which is kind of setting it back quite far because I don't have a full set of tickets in here. But uh, pretty useful to come in here and check on all of the uh, potential errors in here and find any flagged issues either with the way the invoices are being calculated out or any of the uh, other components of your settlement. So uh, that's the uh, review tab within settlements. The next series of tabs within the settlements is the uh, carriers, drivers, trucks, and trailers. So these pull up the uh, different uh, individuals and companies that are involved and any of the equipment involved within the uh, pay period here that's done any work for you. So the carriers one's probably the most important. These other ones are kind of more FYI information. You can see that this just shows all of the different drivers, the carrier they work for, the region they're working in, the total number, number of loads, their first and last ticket, as well as the settlement total. So this is kind of just, you know, the ability to quickly just come in and check and see, um, you know, this driver looks like they started on the last day. So you may want to make sure that they are um, you know, not paying a full insurance amount or things like that. So you can kind of come in here and kind of sanity check things. Same with the trucks and trailers. You can see, you know, any of the information that may apply to why different withholdings are being held, whether it's company plates, leases, activity, activation, deactivation dates, uh, et cetera, how many days they were active during the pay period, uh, first, last ticket, things like that. So you can kind of scroll through here on the trucks and trailers. Uh, trailers looks exactly the same as trucks. You just kind of have a bunch of that information of activation, deactivation, if it's a lease, things like that. But the most important one in here is definitely the carriers. So the carriers has a list of every single of these subcontractors, which maybe you just have the one. You're just running your entire company with own instead of owner operators. You have a bunch of like uh, hired employees. But if you have different ways you got to pay out here, you can do that. Um, but in here, you can see we got the carriers. We have the uh, previous balance, if there is any, the total ticket payout. So this is the amount of payout they get for the loads they ran, their withholdings, any of the, uh, so this is recurring withholdings, the sum of those, any of the one-off withholdings. So we put one in here for spades, any of the fuel receipts that we've linked up with them previously, and they additionally do. So you can see they all kind of sum up here and you get the uh, total settlement payout. So you can come in here and see um, the sum in there. Over here on the manage, you can see view, 
uh, Mark carries reviewed is not reviewed. So if I've come through as part of the process and I look at this and this all looks good, I can come in here, mark the carries reviewed, and then they uh, you know have a little green checkbox, which means that they are good to go for this settlement. So kind of as a process, it makes sense to go through here and uh, make sure that everything looks good and it's just mark as reviewed. If you want to remove it, you can go ahead and do that as well, which will you know remove that approval there. So also within the system here, we can manage some of their settings that we've covered in other videos, the ability to override how things are paid out. Um, so any of the settings in there, as well as the ability to override any recurring withholdings. So if I wanted to change that in here, we could do that and then I need to refresh the uh, recurring withholdings. So we'll go ahead on spades, we're gonna override the recurring withholdings and we're only gonna charge them, you know, $200 a month for uh, the insurance. After doing that, you'll notice that it isn't automatically updated in here. Um, we can deal with this a couple of different ways. One, we could go in and click view and we can refresh the carrier settlement. So this just refreshes it for the one carrier. So the recurring should drop, yeah, from 275 down to 125 since we've overridden that. The other way to deal with it would be to go into the summary section and down at the bottom, you can refresh the entire settlement or in that case, just the recurring withholdings. But uh, you can see in here that we've got that down here. They have a different dollar amount than everybody else since we kind of have the insurance for them. Uh, a couple other things to note within the carriers, we have the ability to show carriers that don't have any tickets. These ones will be faded out. So you can see we've got four carriers that do not have any loads but they still have recurring withholdings, either a flat or based off of equipment or things like that. So uh, you can see here, they kind of flagged yellow that you might want to review that because you either don't want to pay or withhold against them because they don't have any information in there. Uh, in addition to doing that, you can show additional details if you want to see you know, quite a bit more information here. The dollars invoice, the number of tickets, tickets with errors, first, last ticket, all the breakdown of different withholdings, reimbursements, fuel cards, etc. So you can have access to a lot of information here if you want it, but you don't necessarily need to. Oops, went back a page. Let's go back into the settlement. Uh, the other thing in the carrier table is you can also download it to use Manipulate in Excel. So you can download the carrier table or you can download the withholdings. This will just download a Excel spreadsheet, whatever you show. So if you show with or without, you know, you can expand it and then download the whole table or if you just kind of want this truncated table, you can download that and the withholdings will just download all of the, the different withholdings so you have a list of things to look over there. But uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, carriers tab. We're gonna go over this view in the next segment so you can see the uh, details for each of the different carriers in here. So while it's useful to see all of your different carriers with kind of this uh, summary view where you can see all this information, it's uh, usually a good idea within the process to go in and actually view these carriers and check before you review them in here. So opening up this view window, we have the ability to refresh just this carrier settlement so this won't affect any of the other carriers. It'll just refresh this one so it goes a lot quicker instead of doing all the refresh. But you can see right here on the first tab, we have a summary page that basically matches this summary table right here, but just for that carrier. So if I come back in here into view, and I see we have the tickets, recurring withholdings, other withholdings, fuel receipts, additionally due, et cetera, and the total down here at the bottom. So this total, we're kind of reviewing to make sure everything looks good. So it looks like, yeah, I got seven fuel receipts, which is this amount, we're not charging additional fee. They have the insurance fee, but they aren't leasing any trucks, they aren't paying insurance on those. And uh, we're doing 85% payout of this invoiced amount, which gives the total, which they did 15 loads. So it looks good. But as we go through here, you get details or the ability to see details into any one of these. So within the tickets page, you can see in here, we have all of these different tickets, which I believe that these tickets in this example don't have fuel surcharge calculating out properly, which uh, you'd probably want to fix before you get to this point in here. But you can see the total payout or the, and the total invoice and the percentage here. And then you have access to go into any of these tickets and view the ticket and do the uh, whole view ticket window where you have access to all that information. Also in here, uh, we have the uh, equipment tied to this specific transporter. So we have this truck or one truck, one trailer, and they were active for 15 days right here, or the truck was. 
So you can see the active truck right here, we have the ID number. It's not using company plates, which is why there isn't the uh, extra um, uh, withholding forum. It's uh, not an active, so it's activated, was activated last fall and was active for 15 days throughout the settlement. Within here, we do have the ability to change some of this information. Uh, if we do see anything that we need to correct, typically this will be done in other places, but it is here as a courtesy. Uh, if they were using company plates or you know was leased out, we could correct that in here as well. Uh, the other option we have in here is to deactivate a truck. If we catch some of those carriers that had active equipment but didn't have any tickets, uh, this is a great way to quickly kind of fix and deactivate those as needed. And then same with the uh, trailer down here. If I come across here to manage, you can see that we also have the ability to change it if it's leased out or not, as well as deactivate if it's not being used. The withholdings tab will show all the different withholdings that we have. So we've got a recurring right here, insurance, which is the 250 or 500 a month, which is a flat fee. And the truck insurance doesn't apply in this case because they do not have any leased vehicles. If I were to change that within the equipment tab and refresh, then that would show up in here. Uh, we don't have any one-time withholdings for this specific carrier. We can find one that does, but we do have some fuel receipts. So down here, you'll see all these different fuel card or fuel receipts that we've um, brought in and you can see the information in here uh, regarding them. One thing to note is there is the ability to, not with the recurring withholdings, but with one time and fuel receipts, we can float them to the next settlement. So we're going to grab this carrier down here that has a large other withholding spades. So if I come into here and view their settlement, we do have a, uh, you can see that this was one where we did uh, reduce the uh, um, amount of insurance from 500 to 200, maybe they're a part-time or something like that. Uh, but coming into here, you can see that we did do a cash advance previously uh, in the withholding video that we're now we're needing to collect on. But because they obviously did not make enough money from the number of loads that they ran in order to pay this, we could just float or split this. So if I come into here, I can either edit the withholding and change it, delete it all together, float or split. So if I float it to the next settlement, it'll completely get moved over. So the 1200 will be applied in the next pay period. In this case, I actually want to split it. So we're going to change the amount that we're withholding this time. Let's change it to be, we'll say we'll charge $200 now and a thousand dollars down the road. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And you can see that our one-time withholding is now just 200 right now. And then we also have fuel receipts that we've imported for this person. So we could go ahead and float, you know, a couple of these later ones if we wanted to. So we could float these to the next settlement to make sure that they're getting some money this time. And now if we come back over into the summary, you can see because we floated a few things, there's still too many fuel receipts, but we've gone from like negative couple grand down to like negative 600. So we could, you know, float the rest, but uh, an option in there as well. Uh, the last thing in this tab is the addition, or the last thing in this window is the additionally do, where you can see um, any of the uh, bonuses or other payouts that you're giving them. We don't have any recurring, but in this case, it looks like we do have this one $250 high safety scores payout that we're giving to this driver. We also have the ability to create new ones in here if we need to on the fly as we do with one-off withholdings as well. So if there's anything that kind of just got overlooked and needs to be corrected quickly as a part of this process, you can do that in here. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, carrier window. So you would kind of use these to go through and do a very close audit on each of these subtotals and kind of move or manipulate things if needed in order to make it work out for them. So I'd probably actually float quite a few of these over to uh, you know a future one where they're actually working a little bit uh, just so that we can get kind of a positive total right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now they don't have any more of those uh, there. So the total is actually going to be a positive in this case. And kind of just where those end up, if they do get floated, if I go back out to the settlement home, if we go over into withholdings, you can see that now we did have two withholding or one withholding that was $1,200 because we split it. We have the uh, this settlement right here, the 21.2.1 is the one we're working on, and we are doing $200, still hasn't been settled, but uh, we have the extra 1,000 that's getting floated. It's skipping the 21.2.1, so it's gonna get reassigned into the next settlement that uh, we're going ahead and doing that. And field cards kind of works the same way. If we come into here, 
Um, some of these will have been floated to a future one as well. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, settlement uh, carrier window and kind of the carrier tab in general within the uh, settlement process. So we're going to move on after this and kind of wrap it up in the next couple segments. So after we've gone through and we've gone through each of the uh, carriers and we've reviewed them and made sure everything looks good, the next step is to come over into the email and reports tab. So within emails and reports, we get another view on the table and you'll notice up here it says emails are disabled until the settlement is locked. So up until this point, the settlement has been unlocked. If we come back out here, you can see that we've got the unlock symbol. Uh, the unlock symbol means that we're going through and we're currently working on this settlement. We're changing things, potentially moving things around, making sure everything looks good. So we can't actually email out these until the settlement is locked. But within here, you do have the option to download the different reports and at least view those. So if I download these reports and uh, let me pull it over here, you can see that we uh, have access to see what the driver will see when we give them this report. So in here, we have the summary up at the top, the loads, trucks, withholdings, fuel cards, any additional we do, et cetera. So the Excel looks pretty similar to that. So we can preview these if we want to or download them for our own convenience. There also is the option up here at the top to download the entire settlement. This would download it for everybody. Uh, the, this only is supported for the Excel, not for the PDF, because the PDF would be pretty massive and hard to use but uh, you do have the ability to download a giant Excel file with all of them or these individual ones for your own records or for emailing. Um, so within here, you'll notice that all this stuff is kind of grayed out because we're locked. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lock the invoice, which means that changes and refreshes and things will no longer work. And we'll need to uh, unlock it if we need to make any changes, but it'll allow us to mark them as paid and you know, fire them off to the uh, different uh, drivers or carriers in here. So let's go ahead and lock it, which takes a second here. It's going to go ahead. And now we get access to all this other stuff. So as we go through here, you can sort alphabetically or by, you know, whether or not, you know, the dollar amount in here. But uh, we would go in and we'd say, you know, A&D Transport, they, uh, the calculated payout, this is the column right here that you kind of pay attention to, is, you know, 2,871.74. So as we pay them out in our payment system uh, outside of load call, you can go ahead and as you're doing it, also click in here, click paid. And uh, if you end up paying them a different amount, you know, maybe you round up around down, we can put in, you know, a different value right here. Mark them as paid. Whenever you do pay them a different amount, though, it will warn you and say, are you sure you want to mark them as paid this instead of, you know, the actual amount? So we can see yes or no. Um, but you can go ahead and when we pay them out in the other system, you can mark it in here. Say I paid them out at this date and time. And then after that, you can email off the report to them so that they have access to all that information that we kind of showed in that Excel. So if we click email, it'll pull up. It'll pull up the email we've ass that is assigned out to that carrier, which can be changed in the directory or other places. Um, and then based on any presets, which we don't have in here, but we could have had these presets uh, set so the subject and message are pretty straightforward. And uh, it automatically will have these attachments here. So, you know, Andy Transport, Andy Transport PDF with the number in there. And you can go ahead and click send. The... Uh, the customization for those can be accessed under these default settlements. So you can change the from name, the email subject, and the email body. So we can change this settlement um, files, etc. See attached. And if I go ahead and save that and go back into this settlement, which you'll notice now is locked, it has the yellow lock icon instead of the green unlocked. If I come over here and to send an email off to these people, you'll see that these get preset. So settlement files, see attached. So you don't have to write an email every single time. You can customize the from name too. Instead of being load call, it can be from uh, your organization name. But uh, so as you go through, you can you know say, yes, we've paid them in the third party system, put in the actual amount if it differs from what was calculated out and then fire off an email and kind of just run through here. And after you do send an email, you do get access to this carrier history or the email history here. So you can see uh, any emails that were sent from the load call no reply system. So you can track and make sure the emails actually were sent and see what all was attached. 
but uh, you kind of can just work through here and go through each carrier pretty quickly. You know, pay them, mark is paid, fire off email. Pay them, mark is paid, fire off email, etc. So the other thing to note in here is the uh, logs. And all that this page does is it keeps track of when a settlement was created, when it was locked, unlocked, things like that. So within here, you can see I created it this time and then I locked it you know, later on the same day. So there's accountability with creating, locking, and unlocking these as you go through. The only other thing in here is the ability to include test purchaser tickets, which may or may not show based on your organization settings. You'll pretty much never want to click this because then you may be paying out on test loads. But uh, there is the ability here to do that, but there's pretty much never a reason to do an action, unless you're doing kind of a demo invoice to teach your staff and you have a bunch of demo tickets or whatever. There's really never a need to include any of the test purchaser tickets in here. And this just prevents any tickets that are run for the load call, kind of default loaded in test purchaser. Um, those will prevent those from showing up. Now, if you do actually create an alternate test purchaser, this will not catch those. So you want to use the load call test purchaser. Otherwise, you may be paying out on uh, tickets that didn't actually occur, which, you know, it kind of gives the case for, you know, if you do accidentally create some test loads with a different purchaser, that may be a case where you want to change the payout here or, you know, do an extra one time withholding kind of to fix the uh, numbers in here. But uh, yeah, pretty flexible system, uh, pretty comprehensive to come in here and be able to get access to all of this information. There's a, definitely a lot on this page. Obviously, this video is pretty long, but uh, it should give you all the tools that you need in order to make sure that your drivers are getting paid the proper amount. And uh, once a lot of the configuration is set up, it's actually pretty blazing fast to go through, review everybody quick, and make sure that everyone's getting paid on time and that they're staying happy. So yeah, so that's the uh, load call settlement system.